Hi friends, uh, we, we are in Pine Island, Florida and uh, we are at J. Reynolds, J. Reynolds Pharmaculture Food Forest here. So this is another example of food forest we wanted to show. This is two and a half years old, right? Yes. We want to give a quick intro on how you started, how it looked like when you started, what was the soil looking like and what you did. Well, our soil is very sandy. You'll see some more over here, but this was it was a mowed field and I eliminated all the grass, with pure sand. I planted five rows, made mounds, mm -hmm. and put in 50 mango trees. My, for my first understory, first year was sweet potato. Sweet potato. And then I used the sunshine mimosa. I put in plants of that. It runs like with a runner and it's fairly dominant now as far as the ground cover and you have planted something else yes on the beds i have the longevity spinach they call it yeah, which is edible edible as well right but as much as anything i use it as a chop and drop mm -hmm. it's got a lot of uh greenery you put chop this put it under a tree mm -hmm. The millipedes come, they graze it just yeah. like a cow would graze it. Yeah. They make their droppings and it automatically fertilizes the tree. That's very nice. Many people talk about not planting anything around mango. So this is two and a half years old, right? Yes. Into the ground. How, how have your mangoes trees doing, been doing so far? Very well. This already made fruit this year already. They look healthy and you don't... Uh spray pesticides anything wrong. haven't needed to on any any uh, trees they look healthy and they're growing pretty well so now this this bed at first the first year I had a solid hedge of pigeon pea yeah, on the looks, side there's one still there it's a volunteer yeah but it was solid uh -huh. you could hardly see the mango trees okay. the first year yeah they did fine I kept chop drop chop drop after about two years they gave up oh. And so then, then this ground cover came in okay. underneath the trees. It's a good season for that. <laughs> now this was heavily mulched. Yeah. Everything, the whole place. Yeah. Now it's the mulch. That's just the top though. Underneath is sand. It is sand. So what I did the second year, I put in a roll of bananas. Yeah. And then I put in my long-term legumes, ice cream bean, I have the acacia mm -hmm. there. That is the ear pod tree. Ear pod, is it the guanacaste? It's same relative. It's not the same one, but it's a rel close relative. And it's a very vigorous legume. That's only six months. But this will grow, it will be your top uh, it can story. be an overstory. Yeah. Now in mango, you really don't need an overstory, right. but it's very, it grows thin, uh -huh. so it could be. Yeah. That one will get massive. Yeah, massive. I, I have seen guanacaste in um, Costa Rica. Yeah. Hughes. Uh, they have a lot there in Costa Rica. You can build a house that if it doesn't grow taller than a guanacaste. So ah. they don't have like this height. They say it should be less height than the tallest guanacaste around. So that's yeah. their <laughs> So it, they really get huge. Your ice cream bean looks like this also two and a half years in the ground. That one's probably a little older. Oh. These these ice cream beans I did rec seeded. Direct seeded, uh -huh. not not transplanted. That one that was transplanted. Okay. What I did, this was a papaya tree. Yes. I planted the papaya tree and the ice cream bean at the same time. So that when the papaya tree finally declined, yes. the ice cream bean was ready to okay. take over. Papaya needs, doesn't like shade either. They try to go around to find sun. Yeah, that one, he's on his way out. That's yeah. probably my last fruit for that papaya tree. Which varieties of mangoes are these? This is sweet tart. Oh, okay, that's pretty That one is lemon zest. Hmm. We do have Sri Lankan weevil, but that, they don't do much harm. They just... Yeah, they, they take their share. That's what they do. Yeah. You know this one? The oh. jack bean? Jack bean? 
very good legume. It's very well behaved, uh -huh. and that's that was from this spring. I just dropped some seeds. I put it everywhere because it's very well behaved. It doesn't twine up on trees like this yam did. <laughs> I need to. I need to get it off ah, of this yeah, one. It's off of the mango tree. This is a true yam, right? Yes, it's a Dioscoria alata. Yeah, the first year, like I said, I had sweet potato and cassava in here. I've had multiple crops, multiple different things. Yams, papayas, ice cream beans. Papaya and banana for the first two years. Definitely. If nothing else, the bananas can uh, can be a biomass crop. I also have plantains. That's plantain behind you. You had the uh, irrigation before, or you still use it? Do you have to use it anymore? I I really don't have to use it in this area because I don't have any annual type crops growing. Not in the summer. That is. Strange looking. The common name is golden candlestick, and it's it's it is a legume. I'm trying it out. I've used it a few places as a, a legume intercrop. It doesn't. It's a senna. A senna. Most people call it senna. I think a lot of. This is a all edible band, edible shoot bamboo. So they were planted at the same time as the mango trees. Okay, they, they, they grow pretty thick variety, it looks like. Yeah, it's up to, it's a timber type mm -hmm. bamboo. It's a huge edible. So that has been a good cash crop for me. Is this your south side? More north. North. North side. I wonder if it's, if it's sage uh, against the... Uh, if anything, if we get a cold front, it's going to come from that direction. So this will be a little block mm -hmm. for a uh, frost. Okay. Okay. Which we haven't had here for many, many years. So I did a little different here. I got some guava. There's a row of guava in between. Yeah. And I've had a couple of crops off of these. They're, ma they're making don't, now. don't have infestation of white flies as much as we do. But we have left it alone and it kind of takes care of itself when you don't spray that much. Yep. I, no, about the only thing I've done to these is prune back okay. hard. Guavas like for us, it, it, they like more moisture than, uh, yeah, that's what you, you have it lower than the mangoes. Yeah, they don't have any problem with flooding. Yeah. I don't really have a flooding situation here, but I planted everything on mound just in case. It helps secure everything the first two years. Mm -hmm. Mangoes can take some flooding after they yeah. get mature. Yes, I lost, I think, probably nematode. Oh, yeah, right. They're pretty well, susceptible. Uh, yep. I lost a few. Or is it a... They have fruited. I had a few fruit this year, but it's a little too dark now. I think so, yeah. I heard they like sun as But well. this tree loses all its leaves in the winter time, mm. so... They get their sun. Basically, I just left it. It's really too tall. I need to bring it back down. This is a pretty good pink flesh. Okay. type or open and it, it's so working very well sun. very well with the dragon fruit yeah it looks like it doesn't really need that what people make like for concrete pots okay so I eliminated one and I came back uh -huh. This one is uh, white. Okay. The, the other three are all the uh, pink. pink. So I, I'm getting better pollination now. Okay, so mix them up. Yeah, don't ever plant just one type. I learned my lesson. That side looks like you have a citrus here? Yeah, these are all the, uh, the sour citrus. So in here I have about one acre and it's my personal collection you know how you know the story of noah 
and his ark. Yeah. In the Christian tradition, that Noah put two animals of every kind. Uh, well, that's what I did here. I put two fruit trees of every kind I could collect. So oh, I nice. get a lot of diversity, something almost every month, every year. Wow. We'd love to see what you have. Kambuka. Itomba. It's a Eugenia, I believe. Yeah, yeah, there's a uh, rare. I have these days. Itomba. Suriname cherry. Blackberry jam fruit. All the small bushy type mm -hmm. fruits. Mame. And two mames. Two chocolate it's pudding fruit. Oh, that's black support here, what? Black support here, yeah. Aki. Red fruit. I saw a fruit forming the other day. I had a few early. They dropped. There was a few. I might get something this year. How old is this? Four, all this is four years. Four years old. They're on their fourth year now. Gary? Gary. Yeah, I've heard two birds nest in my store. When I put in, put this bed in, this three three beds, I use the uh, lemongrass as a chop and drop hedge. So it, w it was actually solid lemongrass. They declined. Some of them didn't make it. My latest. This was these beds were all made this spring, and I. I cleared an acre of land over there on the other side and used all the wood from the trees as a permanent or a, a long-term mulch on the side of the beds. And so the focus here is in the shade, little shade houses, that is Achachairu. And it's also known as the Bolivian mangosteen. In between every achachairu, they're on 25 foot spacing, is a soursop. So there's 20 achachairu, 20 soursop. And in between them, there's a papaya. Between each one of those is a papaya. So the, uh, then an understory of pigeon pea, turmeric, and malanga and jack beans. These, these jack beans have been pruned back once to mulch, chop and drop. I, did, I also put in a few other things, odds and ends, mm -hmm. different things. But you already planted the sour soap? Yes, they're in here. <laughs> uh, let me show you. There's a sour soap right here. Oh, okay. Are these uh, seedlings or any Seedling. seedlings? So I got papaya, soursop, papaya, achachairu, mm -hmm. repeating across all of those. This open space is going to be my zone one home garden. I'm going to put in raised beds yeah. in this area right next to the house. Uh -huh. So this can, when, when everything else gets shaded yeah. as forest, this will be my long term like a annual home garden. Right? Yeah, this was cleared so. I plan to uh, get it finished, cleared, and then put in the velvet bean cover crop for this winter and plant next spring. So a lot of work, but this was full of these trees. Uh, what were these trees? Mostly iracacia and some melaleuca. Wow. Are you using all these for mulch as well as uh, burn ash? For I, I'm going to just for spread it when I finish, but I used as much of it over there as I could. Now he did. I did have a uh, forestry mulcher yeah. come, and he ground up all the understory. So that's it's fairly rich. It's been it's been fallow for about ten years. So okay, it's very rich soil. Thank you, Jay. Uh, we really enjoyed.
going around your food forest and I think there is a lot to learn for us. Hopefully we can keep all everything that we heard from you. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> and ours is a very small garden and I can't imagine how, how big is your... I've got four acres here. Four acres and even with less than an acre we get overwhelmed with pests and then something already overgrowing. So the way you have managed it's really inspiring. I get overwhelmed sometimes too. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work, but it brings reward as well. Yes, when you get to eat the fruits and uh, you know, see things growing and thriving, it's a lot of reward. And work keeps you healthy, it makes you sleep really good at night. <laughs> <laughs> Any last words to well, people who want to start food forest? Mm, yeah, I would say think long term, think way out. Don't just think the first year or two think further out because things change what you start is going to change every year every year it will always change so think look out look further out okay thank you thank you